All right, so today we're gonna to be going over exposing Teams' search setups uh, using especially the use of conditioning within the search game. And we're gonna be going over this uh, Hotel VOD um, that we had versus LAT at Major 5. And this is a, a map that we kind of got to expose on our defenses for the way we were playing, uh, but we'll go you know, right into it. The first offense that they had, they just did a standard 2-2, uh, but they ended off going towards A. Uh, so it was, a, it was a slower A, but they still ended up committing towards A and finishing off there. The second one is more of a faster A, as you can see here. They have one guy watching uh, the main push because Ant was someone who would like to do that, uh, but they're just going for a trying to bombard this site and get someone over uh, towards this glass stairs area try and disrupt any type of setup that the you know defense might have in the bedroom uh, because once you're able to get someone over in this area it's, it's super annoying to have to clear that out when you're trying to retake the site uh, so here they go with another a faster one you see ant dies uh, trying to kill the bomb carrier here at couches uh, so this is the main spot that I'm gonna want to highlight uh, especially going into uh, the round that I really want to focus on and you know he, we get this or they get this kill here at couches and they're gonna basically uh, expose that gap later on in the game um, because you know if they can get the, another kill there it's good for their setup if they can you know make us be afraid to play that specific spot it's another uh, tool for them to use when they're trying to work us on offense so we'll go into the, you know, they end up winning this round here too. So it's two defensive wins or offensive wins for LAT. And then we'll go over to the round that I really want to focus on. All right. So in this round, this is where we see LAT exposing the gap uh, that they find in our setup. So, you know, the previous two offenses, they did end up t going towards A and it worked. So they conditioned us by going towards that A site. Uh, twice thinking, you know, it worked twice, we can keep abusing this, right? So, you know, they go back into their standard 2-2, two, two, but this time they're going to work the map a little bit more than rather than just, you know, wrapping back towards A like they did in the previous rounds. Uh, so as you can see here, we're going to continue the round. Here we don't send anyone couches, probably because we just want to change it up. You know, the last two rounds were not working for us. Instead, we play more of a spread here where we have one guy holding towards B. Um, number five, Dan, he's gonna be poolside, basically just watching anyone that might be trying to work up mid. And then two guys towards the bedroom side, trying to work together uh, in case that they do go towards that A side again, like they have been uh, previously in the game. So here's where experience and you know just teamwork cross map actually you know benefits and, and can win games and win rounds specifically you know, for teams that can utilize it effectively. So as you can see here, number one and number four, they're gonna be team working towards this diner side. Number two, number three, they're gonna be team working this A side. What they're gonna do is uh, cross map, uh, coordinate with each other. So you're gonna see Envoy push up into the cat room and uh, up towards cat. And you're gonna see Draza, he's gonna try and take his chances and see if he can push through couches. So obviously if there was someone there, they would have the gunfight. If not, he's still getting that map position. And that's the biggest thing for, especially this map. You know, I don't particularly care for the setup that we're doing right now. I assume it was just like, you know, we just gotta try and change it up because we didn't win the previous two defenses. But spreading, especially on this map, was so hard on defense because of how much space, you know, they can you can give uh, the offense to work with. So, you know, in hindsight, you know, something we could do is rather than spreading like this with two guys bedroom, one guy back here holding mid and one guy B site, it's it's a matter of, you know, team working together and making uh, or taking initiative on the defensive side. So you see a lot of the times where teams will four stack A or three stack A, you know, two, one, one top bed, one bottom bed and one, uh, you know, bottom secret here with one guy playing B or, you know, you would see a bunch of teams playing through the mid side here, or they have one guy here, one guy here, one guy here, trying to take space that way so you can deduce where teams are going and, and just teamwork off of that. So if they're going to plan A, you can all wrap this way or all wrap this way, but doing it together. So, you know, this, this setup specifically just allows them to take so much space. You know, see Envoy's gonna push up into here as, as we play the round out. He's gonna be pushing up all of this space, Draz is gonna be pushing up all this space. At this point, they can pretty much deduce, you know, as 
draws a sees no one mid here. He can basically deduce no one mid, no one couches. They're probably playing 2A. We know that one's B side. Last guy is most likely pool if we can just deduce based on the information that we've gotten. So what he's gonna do is th these two guys are gonna coordinate, have a 2B1 on the guy back pool side. And you know, this just, you know, it sets everyone up on our team for failure because they're just gonna be able to teamwork everyone uh, from this position. So as you can see here, we're gonna continue the round out. Number four and number two, literally just baiting with each other, trying to get info. They see number five here. Number two is gonna coordinate or going to set up this kill based on, you know, just pushing through because the bait is already there with number four here. And then number four, he's gonna go back and try and teamwork this guy B side with number one. From this information, number three can go wherever he wants. I'm assuming he's gonna go towards B side because that's where the opening is. Uh, assuming they get this kill on number five, it's only one guy here and the rest of his teammates are, you know, in a position to push towards that B site. From this now, you know, Draza gets this kill on Dan Ghosty. Kyler is actually able to get the kill on Envoy, but Octane is right there to trade the kill. So this is a free B site. From here, you know, in hindsight, you could say that, you know, maybe Brandon could have helped Dan by wrapping back. But in my opinion, the setup was already broken in the first place and nothing was really going to change the outcome of this round based on how much, you know, space we actually gave up. So from here, he's the crux of the, of the position now because he, they can go wherever they want. Uh, they can just toy with the rest of the two guys bed because they know that they're there based on the deduction of where they killed the other guys so it's a free b site and from this you know this causes both of our players to rotate towards mid because they know that b site is completely free it's probably a free plant for them uh, but we actually get hit with the, the double reverse where kenny actually just brings the bomb back towards a because he knows that he, they're probably rotating towards b Draza has the cutoff from mid. He sees these guys mid and Octane's going to wrap towards Draza to help him out. And they're just going to sneak on their way through to A. We have no idea. There's absolutely no way for us to know uh, that they're not B until the bomb is planted. So it's just a really good play out of LAT to expose the gap. You know, in hindsight, it wasn't a, the best setup for us to do what we did. But, you know, this is what you learn from. Um, and you learn from mistakes and you see how teams are trying to counteract what you're doing on the map.